This weekend post, another live edit, unscripted, uncut, the stream of consciousness from my brain to your screen. Hi everybody, I'm Scott Davenport. Thanks for joining me in post. So we're doing a live edit. You have told me you like the live edits, so I'm gonna keep doing them. This one's gonna be a shot from Beans Hollow State Beach, and uh, I don't even know what photo it's gonna be yet. I'm pre-recording this introduction. Uh, I've barely even started to cull the images, let alone um, you know pick one I think would be interesting to process. So um, with that very vague introduction, we're going to fast forward through the magic of the internet, dive into Lightroom, and get started on a seascape from Beans Hollow. So I have been going back and forth between these two photos, trying to decide which one I want to process today. And uh, I like this one because of these really nice, long, strong, sweeping lines. Uh, this one just feels a little more even. The ocean is a little bit smoothed out, a little more even, and I actually have a nice little bit of human element in the background there. Uh, but of the two, I, I keep going back to this one because of these streaking lines here. Uh, even though this, this area of the ocean, uh, it, I don't know, it's a little less pleasing to me, but I really like what's going on here. And, and there might be some things that uh, can do to minimize this. We'll see how we get into it. So I'm going to work with this image. So let's bring it over into develop and start with basic stuff. Lens corrections, turn that on. And uh, let's hit the R key, change the overlay and take a look at crop wise. Actually, let's just use the angle tool. Click over here, drag a big old line, get the horizon nice and perfect. Okay, really slight. Press enter on that. Uh, speaking of crop, let's go ahead and keep working with that. And um, maybe bring in from this corner a little bit. Let's see if... Uh, I'm looking to get a little more of a um, an evenness to these lines here. They're actually pretty good. Um, Looking at you know here all the way to the edge, I might bring this in just a little bit, uh, so that I'm getting a hint of this here, but I'm kind of meeting you know so I've got a nice zig and zag through here, and then this is coming through there. That's pretty good. Let's just hit enter on that crop. Next thing is going to be uh, spot removal, and I know I have a very dirty sensor, so this is going to take some work. Actually, thankfully I've got some decent cloud cover up here. So it's masking a lot of my dirty sensor, so I'm not going to need to do too much there. Now these guys here, let me turn off that tool and zoom in here a little bit. Because of all the streaks of the water going through, um, these kind of bother me, well, kind of don't bother me. I'm not really sure if I'm going to remove them or not. I do know that I won't be happy with Lightroom's results. So I'm going to defer that until going into on one for something like the clone stamp tool or the perfect eraser. All right, now let's just do some basic adjustments. So looking at the histogram, the exposure is pretty good. I've got, you know, pretty good darks, pretty good whites, J key, check out. Okay, a little bit of highlight blowing there, which is expected. That's the sun. The sun is going to be blown out. So I don't think I'm going to do much with um, exposure. Let's look at white balance. Um, let's just try an auto really quick. It's probably going to cool it down a little bit. I don't want to cool it down. Um, let's try making these water streaks actually white. It's probably going to warm it up some. I like that better. It's a little more, as I recall it. You know, the sky was still a little bit warm there. Maybe nudge that off just a little bit toward coolness. No, I liked the warmth there previously. I'm going to stick with that. It's one of the nice things about white balance in a landscape. You really get to choose what you like. There's no right or wrong. Contrast. V key. Add a little bit of contrast. Not too much. Now I'll move on to whites and blacks option. We've got white points. That's fine. I'll rein those in with the highlight slider in a minute. Blacks. We'll darken some blacks here a little bit. I should see some in those little shadow areas. So right up over here, you're starting to see those that black clipping come in, and I'll back that off just so it's not clipping at all. Great. Open up the shadows a little bit. This is a relatively dark photo because there wasn't a lot of light. Bring the highlights in, down just a tiny bit, and that's really to bring back in some of that sunset glow there. Um, let's see, what else? A bit of clarity, 
not too much. This is a pretty soft scene. And vibrance I'll need to be gentle on because if I go too much, you can see that sky become day glow orange. Um, it's just way, you know, it's, the oranges and reds really are sensitive to vibration, vibration, <laughs> vibrance, and uh, saturation. Uh, the, 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 that's a new combo slider, vibration. We can adjust both at the same time. Uh, let's see. Um, the other thing I want to do is I really do want to brighten up this foreground a little bit. Uh, let's go with a gradient filter, kind of drag that up here. Which way is this masking right now? Okay, good. And we will nudge exposure up a little bit. Not a lot, just a little. And let's reposition this um, more in that area and maybe even start to follow this line of the ocean a little bit. Check that before and after. Okay, that's nice. It's giving me a little more um, brightness here, which means my eyes are going to look here. I'm obviously going to have the brightness of the sun, but I, I do want to emphasize you know, these, these streaks of water here. Um, now, the last thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to hold on the V key again. And that's just to take a look at this in black and white. Um, because in and of itself, it actually is it's not a bad black and white photo. Let's stick with with color for now and uh, see where things go from here. All right, that's good for the gradiated filter. Anything else that I want to do in Lightroom? Maybe something with, with colors. Let's first start with saturation. I'm going to click this little, uh, I don't know what to call this thing. Uh, it's this little double-headed arrow. As you put it and hover it over the image, you'll see these highlights these uh, different sliders get highlighted. So as I'm hovering here, this is more of a yellow. Obviously, I'll go up in here, I'll get an orange. You know, these are yellows. I'm looking to see if I can find anything in the blue range. I start to play with that a little bit. So now I'm clicking and I'm dragging upward. More blues, less blues. I think I'm going to tone the blues down a little bit. Let's see what that's doing there. Before and after. Very subtle. Not a whole lot going on there. Um, luminance, maybe I'll just adjust them directly and raising the luminance. I'm trying to take a little of the blue out of the scene and add a little more warmth down here. Uh, and actually, maybe the best thing to do for that is to go back to this filter and let's see what we can do. Add a little bit of warmth. That's even better. I think that's going to be a better, a better choice than trying to manipulate the color channels themselves. Let me nudge that up. 10 looks pretty good. And again, I'm, I'm not really watching the number. I'm watching the screen as I move the slider. Um, all right, backslash, quick check before and after. That's looking pretty good. Uh, I'm going to just be done with these changes and send this over into layers so I can see about cleaning up these couple of little spots here and then do some final stylization in effects. In layers, the main thing I want to do is just tidy up these few bits of pebbles and so forth that are flipping around there. Let's go into 100%, zoom, and take care of these guys. So I want to take care of anything that can be construed as a spot. And I'm going to turn off my little blinking cursor here for the minute so I can really see what's going on. Let's go ahead and try that. That's nice. Let's see how the eraser does on this guy. Not too good. Let's make it a little bit bigger and try to give it a little more information to work with. That's better. I can deal with that. Uh, let's see. And these other guys over here. Now these streaks are going to be a problem because the eraser is probably going to try to connect those and it's going to look jagged. Yeah. So we're going to switch to the clone stamp. And uh, if you're curious as to like you know some some rules and guidelines about when to use clone stamp, when to use the eraser, when to use the retouch brush. I have an entire video course on this stuff. And you can check all that out there. That's a little bit harsh. Let's bring the feather up even farther. Better. I need to get a better sample point. So option click there. Let's be a little more precise. That's good enough. I'm going to take that. Um, this guy here will probably be the next easiest one. That's good. Um, maybe come in a little bit. Let me try that one more time. A little bit larger, a little bit farther away. 
And you can you can kind of drive yourself crazy with some of these types of adjustments. So it it needs to be decent, but it doesn't always need to be perfect. Now, now this one's going to be a little more challenging. Let's go back to the eraser. That may give me enough to get rid of the large chunk, and then I can clean up afterward. All right, not bad, not great. Now let's try to clean up. I have a less of a alignment and um, fuzzing issue to deal with here. Retouch brush to try to smooth that together. This is not looking so good. All right, opacity, bring that down. Whoops, let's get that out of there. Opacity on the clone, bring that down. Try to try to blend this in some a little bit more. Again, enough to be decent. And I think the thing I need to get a little more of is that white line there, fading that in better. And then this part here, fading that in better. Maybe one more time. Let's bring that even down farther. This is turning into a pretty darn long, boring watch Scott retouch a rock. Um, okay. Um, boy, I got a lot of these here. All right. I'm going to do maybe one more. And then I'll come back to the other ones later if uh, if the rest of the image starts to turn out okay. But you're gonna get the idea here, where um, this is about what what we're gonna do is just touch away these few things that are annoying. That one's probably better for the eraser. Take care of that. That's okay. Let's try about just a sweep through there. I thought that would be bad at all. All right, I'm gonna call that success. And with that, turn this to a smart layer. Bring it over into effects. All right, first I'm going to get rid of my navigator so I have more filter space. Option one to hide that. Let's turn back on our pointer. And uh, the first thing I want to do is I want some more warmth in this photo. So I'm going to first try a, uh, a sunshine filter and give that a try and see what that does. That's pretty nice. Um, let's see. Got a little more warmth and maybe a touch of saturation, real slight on saturation. I gotta be, again, careful of those oranges. And let's quickly check that before and after. That's pretty nice, I like that. Um, it seems to be adding a, a bit of a, a vignette almost, which I kind of don't like. Um, I like the, the softness of it and the glow. Um, let me try lowering the amount some. That's doing better now. You see those, these edges here are, are, are brightening back up. So if I go back to that 50%, it's getting darker there. I bring that back out a little bit, and I like that better. I'm going to keep that like that. Um, let's see now. I want some contrast, dynamic contrast. I want these, these fingers of water to jump out. Those are uh, kind of the star of this photo here. But I don't want this contrast to be everywhere. So first, let's do that. That looks cool, maybe a little much. So right now, I am adjusting sliders, and I am really just watching this foreground area. This is where my eyes are. Not really caring about the rest of the photo. So larges are having the most impact. Try that 11. What happens when I jack up medium? All right, medium's having some pretty strong effect, too. Let's filter that down. Maybe small, just a tiny bit. Not seeing much difference there, we'll leave it there. Then I want to remove that from the rest of the scene. So I drop a bug on the scene. Rotate that a little bit. We'll feather it out. And I'm going to lower the opacity of the bug. I don't want to remove the contrast entirely from the background, just some. So let's try around well, if my computer would catch up to me. There we go, 65. The number's not important, but what's the image look like? That's pretty cool, before, after. Yeah, getting some more punch up in here. Okay, uh, what else to play with? Um, actually, while I have the Vibrance slider here, let's take a look at that. Not too bad. Um, all right, we're going to go with that. Uh, you know, what really might look nice on this... Um, is a photo filter. Again, I'm still thinking in terms of warmth. Um, I could do it with an adjustable 
gradient, uh, but let's try a photo filter. And we're just going to do a standard warming filter. Now this is going to default to cool. Well, grab a preset. Let's see, 81 warming, 85 warming. 85 is too, too dingy. 81 is nice. Orange might be good. Oh, orange is nice. I like orange. Not that strong, but I like orange. So let's take the opacity down some and just start to play. Yeah, I like that. I don't think I'm gonna need much more more for this image here. Let me quickly do a backslash before and after. It's nice, add some nice warmth to the foreground. And uh, subtle vignette. I think that's really all I'm gonna do to finish this guy off. That's good. I want to see exactly where my vignette is. I'm gonna bring that size up. I just want the corners to be kind of kissed by the vignette, not too much, and then bring that feather back up. Nice gentle fade before, after, maybe even back the opacity off a little bit. I like it, I think we are done. So uh, this is where we were in layers after a little retouching and some basics in Lightroom. And there's our final product. So there we have it, here's the final product again. And a tip of the week, I will put something at the bottom of the screen here. Because again, I'm pre-recording this outro and I don't quite know what image I processed or what things came out of it. You know, what did I learn? You know, what was, a, what was an interesting processing hint? So read the bottom of the screen. I'm sure it's a cool one. And that wraps up in post for this week. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you got a tip or two, and I think my tip was all right this week. I'm really going to hope so. <laughs> if you got questions, please send them in. I'd love to hear from you. You can contact me through my website directly. Uh, I usually turn uh, messages and responses around within a couple of days at most. And uh, if your question is a, a quite an interesting one, or I think something that's going to be usable by lots of photographers, I'm going to share that. And uh, your, your questions really, really help. Um, yeah, they help guide this show. They help me with my photography, making me think about things. And hopefully my answers are helping you too. So, you know, all around, you know, it's upside. So please send those questions in. And until next time, happy shooting.